there's only one bottom line on Wall Street, and that bottom line is how much money you make. Whatever your background was, it's can you make money, can you contribute to profitable ideas? This is like being in a foxhole all day long with your enemies. I've seen many people come close to blows over a transaction. Greed is ugly. Make as much money as you can so that you can get out of there before it turns you to the dark side. Do you want me to buy it on a straight plastic or a zero plastic? It's a public offer, it's not me. Okay? So stop pulling my chain. If you weren't around, who would I make fun of? Well, I need you. You need me. Hey, heard you think it's easy to make money in this business? There, there is no limit for you, huh? What do you need? Uh, 90 bid, 10 thou. Sold. What am I taking? BK. How do you spell that? <laughs> You're a very funny guy. I try my best. <laughs> I think Wall Street gets a bad name. I think people think that it's a bunch of stuffed shirts with master's degrees in finance and MBAs from Wharton and Harvard and forget about it. I mean, there are real people down here with real emotions and real passion. Floor traders, basically, they usually have some kind of headpiece on, like I do. The earpiece is just to communicate with my booth to let them know what's, what I'm doing or what I should be doing. That's the mind behind the puppet. That's the one that's pulling my strings, basically. Those are mostly option booths right there. All the way at the top in the middle, that's an equity firm. And then South Balcony, that one is an equity and option firm. It does both. When uh, they call me with my orders, they tell me what I'm getting, comes through my handheld, electronic device that I have, and I run around executing orders. Sometimes I have to leave them with the specialists who watch it for me because I have so many that I have to do. Timmy, yeah. SEA, can I check it again, please? SEA, yeah. yes, sir. You Thank are. you very much. Got two thousand to buy. I got another two thousand to buy here, Ann. Sell 1,561 Apex. Please. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Party on. Most people don't understand what I do. Most people don't understand what a hedge fund is. I mean, when I lived down in Florida, I said I run a hedge fund. They thought I was in landscaping, you know? That's not even a joke. Traders were, were trying to uh, figure out the future. I mean, this is the, the last uh, undiscovered mystery on Earth. Traders are no better than 100 years ago, you know? I mean, we're still guessing where the market is gonna be. Yeah, we have technical analysis. We have all these tools to try and figure out what's going on, but we don't know. It's the great race to, to try and figure out the unknown. That's what it's about. Today my mom is coming over in a little bit to uh, say hello and, and clean and, and replenish my uh, water supplies. Um, she's, she's kind of my personal uh, slave. May I come in? Hey, Mom. Hey, Timmy. How are you? How are you? Good. Hello. Oh, you look so good. I come here once every two or three weeks to clean his room and to do his bathroom. And it gives me a chance to see him. He's still my Baby, can't help it. My only child. There you go. So I just come in, I just feel needed. I do my mommy thing. See, I make Timmy's bed, and at home, my husband makes our bed. <laughs> and I have my own cleaning lady, but um, somehow or another, I became Timmy's cleaning lady. She cleans the apartment. She brings me food, water, does my laundry. Um, my other roommate cooks for me. My mom's not that good of a cook. Well, today it took me two and a half hours to get here. Some of my friends laugh at me. They can't believe that I go through this, but I enjoy it. You know, I don't really care what my friends think. I feel good that he has a clean bed in a clean bathroom. I don't have to worry about him for a few weeks because mothers always worry about their sons. Oh, did he? All right, that explains something. That's interesting. I didn't, I didn't have any clue of that. So look, I, well, what we do is analyze companies. That sounds pretty bad for those guys. Where public valuation is inefficient, you can go in there and find an opportunity to sell something that's overvalued or buy something that's undervalued. Was when it was the valuation of any company is best 
when it reflects the truth. If all you have is the company implying that things are great and things are growing, its stock is going to have a much higher valuation. I was out at the company. They said that they got the more short sellers. They're a reality check sometimes to almost an exclusively bullish presentation by whether it be the companies themselves or the fee-hungry Wall Street analysts that promote them. So it's good to have some balance to that. One of the companies we are following is a very expensive designer jean manufacturer. $250 jeans, why anybody buys those, I don't know. But they do, These people do buy them. And so uh, this company we think has an inventory problem, but they're not acknowledging it to anybody. These jeans a couple of years ago were the hot jeans. And so they gave specific stores exclusive right to sell the jeans in a certain area. So we're going to go up to the Bronx. We're going to go to a kind of a retail alley. And the reason for that is one of the ways to check whether they're overstocked is to look and see if some of the B and C stores are showing up with product. You're the person that we want out there. You know the difference between a good product and a bad product, and you're going to bring them in and get them right where you want them to be. That's your strength. And some of the guys that you've shown in so far have an incredible potential. We want a guy that's young, aggressive, hungry, smart, and that hasn't lived through some of the market cycles that people over 30 have lived through. Why do you think that's important? Because they don't have any prejudices. We'd like to talk to anybody that feels they have a distinct edge in any kind of a market, whatever they base it on, whether they base it on migratory routes of elephants, that a legendary trader <laughs> who's attracted legendary investors uh, developed a program on. Say, say that again, what did he do? He developed a trading program based on migratory routes of elephants in Africa. What does that have to do with anything? There's, believe it or not, there's a pattern behind how they do what they do and where they go. And he found stocks that tend to follow that pattern. And if he decides if the elephant goes too far to the right and it needs to come back to the left, he'll buy or sell a stock Are based on them, those patterns. Absolutely. It's true, it's incredible. I thought you were kidding. What it is is markets trend. If you could identify that trend and stay with that trend until that trend changes, you could make an awful lot of money. I need a drink. So, Mateo. What? What the hell are these handcuffs doing here? You shut up, I am losing money. I won them at Dave and Buster's. Go away. Oh. Leave me alone. I'm down five grand. Okay with the RS. Hey, Artie. You're on top of that ERS of the Midwest? And there's a whole different language that's spoken on a trading floor. And everyone knows the language. Okay. <laughs> Homie, what's here? Don't lie to me. Uh, small at 91. What do you need to do? 2,500 shares. Left. I'm a buyer. 90 top. 10 grand. I don't want it there. 90 so minus stick. Offered at one. There are correct ways to bid for a stock. There's correct ways to offer or sell a stock. And if you don't do it the right way, the person's not going to know what you're talking about. Can't sell it at 90 here. All right. I'll buy the stock away at 90. All right. And I'll pay 91 for 7,000. It's old. What do I take? 3,090 is, uh, is ATS. Uh -huh. 91 stocks BK. How do you spell that? No. It was old the 30th time you said it. Okay? But it's still funny. Yeah, you can drop it. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I love it. <laughs> Gecko. It's a blue shirt with a white collar, as popularized by Michael Douglas's character Gordon Gecko in the movie Wall Street. They go in and out of style, but everybody's got one in the back of their closet. As in, hey man, you gonna wear your gecko? We want you to be out there, get in sync with the investment community, and you are. You want to get that rhythm, you're nailing that rhythm, and you're gonna bring us some of the biggest investors and some of the biggest managers on the planet because they're attracted to you naturally, and after the initial attraction, you have the follow through, so it just gets done. Everybody's gonna listen to you, so it's your platform, I and mean, you can do anything that you wanna do. 
And you, and the good thing about you is you don't take advantage of it. You don't know it is the good thing. Yeah, then, no, I don't. So I mean, that's a great thing. That's a gift. Forgetting about business, your biggest challenge is going to be to fend off the wedding proposal. <laughs> Wall Street is paying a high valuation for the stock because it believes that this is a great company that's not just hit it big in last year's denim craze, but is going to have a long growth story. If in fact they do have an inventory problem and they're going to struggle to meet sales and earnings expectations in the future, so there's money to be made in covering the short, buy low, sell high, but just in reverse order. It's like that. Yeah, right there, right in the window. Jeans of the make that we're looking at. Front and center, right in the window. So, I'm gonna go check another store. <laughs> Yeah, they got them. These guys are moving product through channels that they initially didn't intend to. The only conclusion I can come up with is because they have excess product and they're trying to get it out the door so they can book it as revenues and, and earnings. This is supposed to be an exclusive, highly demanded brand that has cachet. They must have had several hundred jeans in there. And that's just what's on display. Jeans and fashion are, are fads, and so the market shouldn't pay massive multiples for today's hip jean company. This was just a little piece of the puzzle that says, this, the, the world is flooded with these $300 jeans, and we just saw you know one example of that. Well, I work out of my apartment because I'm a cheap Jew. I can say that I am Jewish. People say, get an office and we'll give you money. And I say, no, give me money and then I'll get an office. Make it worth my while. I mean, this is a tax deduction. Timmy never ceases to amaze me, okay? And he's always been like this. I think he received about 12 or 13,000 from his bar mitzvah. I don't remember the exact amount, but I know he turned it into 900,000, maybe a million. I have complete confidence in Timmy. Not just because I'm his mother, and I'm not just saying that because I'm his mother. I'm not just saying that because I'm his mother. I don't think you'll ever lose money. All right, I believe you. You don't think I'll ever lose money? Well, you're going to lose money, but you're all also, I mean, everyone loses money at some point in their life, but you're never going to. But you're not saying this just because you're my mother. No. <laughs> Shut up. You going to hit me? You going to hit me on camera? <laughs> Bring back my childhood? <laughs> oh, right. I was an abusive mother. I'm glad you can finally admit it. Thank you. <laughs> Abused child. <laughs> now let's laugh about it. You can't see the scars. They're buried in my heart, you bitch. He's got a great sense of humor, okay? He always, he's always made people laugh, but Timmy's highly intelligent. I feel very grateful that at a young age he found what he wanted to do. He has his identity, you know, he knows what he's doing and he loves what he does. Okay, Timmy, I'm leaving. All right, one sec, I'm in the middle of the trade. Okay. Okay, bye. Hi, sweetheart. Love you. Yeah, love you too. Bye. Bye. Today I'm going to meet with a hedge fund manager who was recommended to me by a friend. His name is Kevin Casey and he runs a hedge fund that focuses primarily on value investments. He has had a great track record but is still relatively small and he would like to grow. Thank you. Can you tell me a little bit more about your background? In uh, the summer of 02 is when I quit the job I was at. I thought stocks were cheap enough and started a hedge fund, had a mortgage to the apartment. There were a thousand stocks trading at 10 P or less. And that was like the first time in two decades that they were that cheap. And so you yourself took on a lot of risk uh, to become an entrepreneur and start this venture. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how much of your own money do you have invested in your fund? Basically like 90% of my liquid net worth. That's very good. That's a convincing argument for investors. <laughs> 
1,800 Every summer we usually try to hire a few, mostly it's college level interns, people that have majored in finance are looking to get a little experience, add to the resume. Um, Daniel's the son of one of our senior traders here. Asked if he can come in and get a flavor of what goes on here, what dad does for a living. And uh, you know, he's been a good asset. Uh, he's a hard worker. He's learned a lot, I think, in the last few weeks too. So we'll abuse him for the rest of the summer. I'm learning from a girl over there. Her name is Liz. She teaches me all the all the tricks and trades of how to work the book. Basically, I'm the only female in the post. I'm like everyone's mother. She's the matron of the post. What I do is back here there are a bunch of files and papers that cut that they spit out through their computers and they come out through here and we have to file them, ripping them off, but they come out like rapid fire, usually in the morning in the late afternoon, right about now, they usually start coming out rapidly. Mr. Nunn here shows me how to how to read this, this these charts here. And um, teaching I, them how to follow the market. Yeah. I read these too. I, I, I figured them out too. Is it harder or not as hard as you thought? I work I work harder. No, yeah, yeah. Stop chewing your nails. <laughs> I mean, if there's gold rush, and there's not really a lot of gold, you can still make a lot of money selling shovels. Tonight we're going to uh, the Bull and the Bear um, at the Waldorf Astoria. And we're gonna meet up with, with some of my Wall Street friends and, and we're gonna talk trading and, and talk Wall Street and talk finance and, and uh, have a good time. Most of my friends my age, they're not in an independent situation like me. One trades options, another one assists in trading currency, another one works for a real estate hedge fund. It's just a, all sorts of uh, Wall Street type people. At 24 years old, they hire young kids because we're cheap and we work harder than everybody else. Exactly, we have to. I don't have a wife and kids to go home to at 6 o'clock at night. I, get, I can stay in the office and work if I have to. One of the few jobs where you have to stay up to date on things, otherwise yeah. you're out of the game. And it's also competitive. That's another thing. That's what I like about it the best. I like Wall Street because you can be against the grain and rebellious and make a lot of money if, if, if you do different things than other people do. Your adrenaline gets flowing, you know, in the morning and it doesn't stop until exactly. the market closes. And you look forward to going to work in the morning. Yeah, you know? yeah. And unlike so many right? Exactly. I mean, you look forward. You're like, you're like, today I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make. Of money. I bound out of bed when I know that maybe there's a $20 million loan closing that I originated. I mean, exactly. you can't complain. Life is good. <laughs> Life is definitely good. You know what? The bad days are better than the good days. The good days, you're worried about losing what you just made. The bad days, you're like, my stock got cheaper. I'm, you know what I mean? That's the way I look at it. Well, That's you, That's smart value investment. you also lose a little bit of emotion over time. You know, a $50,000 update used to, I'd take three laps exactly. around the, the campus scores, naked. You know, I'd be pumped up. Now, $50,000, it's a good day, but it's, it's all right. It's, it's not just a great. day. It's not your year. It's just a day. It's not like or $50,000 down. It's, it's bad, but it's not a, a deal breaker. If I had a million dollar up day or a million dollar down day, then talk to me then. Some of these stocks that may have some momentum, uh, you know, make a judgment call on where they seem to be going towards the end of the day. Part of the service that a broker provides that a machine does not is information. So that's why some people prefer to use a broker. They get, they get a feel for the marketplace. What's going on? Your partner said this morning we were splitting stock. Do you want me to buy it on a straight plastic or a zero plastic? I use a thousand trays a Okay, well then. No, no. Would be Ask the geniuses in the booth what, what would they like me to do. When there's a transaction that takes place, we don't whip a contract out of our pocket and sign it. We don't shake hands even. It's done on a verbal agreement. Last 18, I can't buy it on a straight plus. Sorry, out of luck. Out of luck. Next. This is my job having Next. to yeah, that. Your job is to stand here and find out a way for us to buy you lunch every day. That's your job. You buy lunch In today. the middle of executing orders. You didn't buy me lunch today. One They're all friendly. Week. They're all nice to each other. <laughs> they just they just bust each other's chops. That's all. Ask me what they would like me to do. And who's the 19 offer now? It's 100 shares. I am not going to buy it. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm showing stock behind it. You're in liquidity or more. That's my job. You got upset when there was a one lot there. Now you get upset when there's 5,000 shares there. Come back to me and tell me what you care. Ask the question. Come back to me and tell me what it is you want me to do. Ask the brain trust in the booth. Get a real dealer over here. Okay. All right. Well, in the meantime, you've done nothing. 
instead of the imposter. In the meantime, you've done nothing. I'm just a pretty Ask the brain trust in the booth what they want us to do. Take me out of 20. <laughs> we'll take, how about we take you out to dinner first? If you work on Wall Street, it, it comes down to what you're all about. I would absolutely recommend it if you're the right personality. Good night, man. Nice job there. Three days from now, I have a meeting with a fund of funds. I met with them six months ago. Never heard anything back from them. Thought I did horribly. They called me up the other day saying, we're still following you. We love your strategy. We love your fund. We're thinking about uh, giving you two and a half to three million. Uh, come in on Monday. Talk to us. Let us know um, how's it going. Out of the blue. So all my work, you know, you don't think it's paying off. You don't think anyone's paying attention. Out of the blue, someone comes and could just double the size of your fund. Doesn't it feel like a lot of times as soon as you're about to, to give up, you make money yes. or, or you have a good yes. opportunity? It's like hooking up with girls. When you're it's not looking for true. it, it just happens. There's Sweet. a common statement known as <laughs> you money, where the extent that you can say, you know, I have <laughs> You, I can walk into my boss's office and pee on his on his desk, and what, it doesn't matter because I have enough money to do whatever I want to do. Where do you guys I define that? The problem is, is like you know, money could be a ten million, but like yeah. then, then then all of a sudden you're you're enough. hanging out with people who have ten million, and then they They're have like, jets, they have jets, and then like you're like, I, I can't afford a jet with ten million. So I need a hundred million, you know. If you're a loser and you only have two hundred million dollars, it's as good as a cool guy with two million. Yeah, it, it, it does depend. Fifty million. It does depend on what you're spending on. Twenty-five million. 100 million. I say 100 million dollars. Yeah, right? As well. 100 yeah. million. F you money is around 20 million. Yeah. 200 million. You greedy mother. F you money, my opinion is say you have 10 million dollars. You invest in 5% treasuries. You're bringing in $500,000 a year. That's enough to send your kid to college, buy braces. You can go on a nice vacation. You can buy a boat. You can have a summer house. I think that's you money because you can do whatever you want. You guys agree? You can have, God bless America. You can't, you can't have a private jet though. All right, you can't have a private jet. Drink near but you can live the ultimate middle class, upper middle class lifestyle that everybody dreams of. F you money is money that it, you don't have to reason Absorbent. for it. Right. Exactly. It's ridiculous. I don't think you have to you reason throw, with $10 throw, million. Dollars. No, but you can't waste 20000 on some stripper that you make. $500,000 tax free income. You can do income. a lot of stuff for upper middle class. $500,000. But the keyword is upper income. middle, not upper. Right. Amen. You, know, you just man. have cheap taste. Agree. That's good. Have fun with I your... Have cheap your... taste, too. I agree with That's you. good. Have, have, cheap taste, my friend. have, have fun with your daughter's braces. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Because, I mean, uh, 500,000... Oh, what do you what do we need to do? There's a f***ing here. You're not going to get to pay me. Whatever. It's embarrassing. It doesn't even matter. 500,000 in New York is nothing. Dude, you can do whatever you want, $10 million. You can do whatever you want, not whatever we want. I want to be able to say, I quit this. I'll be a teacher at 40 years old. I'll have my boat in Florida. And I can say sure. F you because I have F you money. Well, have fun in your middle class Florida trailer home. I like the Bahamas better. I just want to be able to go to any store I want, any f***ing car dealership I want, and just do whatever I want, you know, buy whatever I want. At any time, any time during the day. If some single mother comes up to me and she's waiting at this table and I'm just at a diner getting some bite I'll to eat. I'll give her a $200 tip no, on $100. $200 yeah, right. and her kid needs to go to, child, go to college. I want to be able to say, hey, here's 20 grand, send your kid to college. <laughs> you know, I think that's what, it is. honestly, that's, a, that's how I feel. I like that. Oh, it's true. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, Sandy. It's so gross. Ever since I put that in. He dropped all my clothes on the cockroach. Try to help. Hands on research. Pretty pony, pretty pony. Nobody can bullshit as good as you.